Hey everyone, thank you for watching Test Tube Plus today. I am Trace, welcome back, or welcome for the first time. This is a show where we take big topics in science, we spend a whole week talking just about that. This week we're talking about genes. This is sort of like a podcast style of show, so feel free, pop in some headphones, listen in the background. I've got my notes here, and uh, let's get to it. So what exactly do genes do? And, you know, what don't genes do? Genes are made of DNA. They come in different types, called alleles. So genes for hair color, for example, they might come with black hair, you might have blonde hair, you might have red hair, you might have a mix of any number of these groups, and those are different alleles. So genes are inherited. You get one from each parent, and they're passed down, again, from person to person. So as you're getting these genes, you're going to get your genetic makeup, your genetic predisposition, some diseases and some ways of looking, some structures on your body have genetic predispositions with these alleles. So say your mother is blonde and your father is a brunette. That would mean that your genetic makeup would have possibly an allele for blonde and allele for brown. Each gene has a dominant or recessive value or type. So if brown is dominant and blonde is recessive and mom and pop give you their genetics, you have a 75% chance of being a brunette. It's just kind of how genetics works. This was discovered by Gregory Mendel, a monk who bred pea plants. And he created these little squares where you could put like a big T and a little T, and that would be for a tall plant or a short plant. And you can create this whole system where you can determine, if you understand how genetics works, what kind of a plant you are likely to get, or in this case, what kind of hair color you're likely to get. So genes can change a lot of different things. Some of them have single genes that do a lot of stuff, and some are lots of genes, which makes those mapping big T, little T a lot more complicated. But things that genes, we know that genes can change are your hair color, your eye color, the melanin content of your skin, or essentially how much melanin so your skin will look darker or lighter. Less melanin means lighter, more melanin means darker. It also can affect your height, which is a lot of different factors, but genes affect that. Additionally, it can affect your motivation, your personality, your confidence. All of those things can be determined in part by your genetics or the genes passed down to you. Additionally, intelligence is thought to be genetically predisposed. It also can change how your cells form, whether you have a widow's peak like I do right here, whether you roll your tongue like this, mm, like that. That means that I have the genetic predisposition for that. There are other ones too, like being able to uh, have dimples or your eye and ear shape. Having freckles is actually determined by one gene. Right and left handedness is determined maybe by two genes. When you clasp your hands together, whether the thumb from your right hand is on top or the thumb from your left hand is on top, that is determined by your genes. Even things that you would never think about. Like the hemoglobin that sits on your red blood cells and carries oxygen through your blood, that is from a gene. And if that one gene is mutated, it could cause the hemoglobin on your blood to be generated wrong or improperly, really. And that is the basis for anemia. What genes can't change, on the other hand, is a whole ton of other stuff. Genes don't always do just one thing. A single gene might determine something, but it could also determine something else. Genes are usually just a smaller part of a greater whole of your genetics. So even though I mentioned melanin earlier as darker or lighter or more or less melanin, there's no one gene that controls how much melanin is, pre is presented to your skin. This is changing all the time, by the way. The left and right handedness, for example, that's still a debate as to whether it's one gene or two. I pulled a lot of this research either from memory or also from, uh, well, researching it this week, and things could have actually changed from when we filmed this episode until when you're watching it, because genetics is changing so, so, so fast. Genes and diseases are also connected. A lot of our genetic mutation can cause diseases, like anemia, which I just mentioned. In 2003, when the Human Genome Project completed their research, which, by the way, it's the largest collaborative biological research project ever, and it mapped the whole human genome, they found out a lot of things about genes and disease. The National Center for Biotechnology Information has a list of what chromosomes, those puffy Xs, have what 
genes, which then create a disease in that person. So for example, give me a couple examples here. Chromosome 4 has Huntington's, Parkinson's, narcolepsy, and, on, and achondroplasia. All of those have genes in chromosome 4. And if you have the Huntington's gene, you will get Huntington's. Funnily enough, Huntington's is a dominant gene, but only manifests in a very small portion of the population. So just because something is dominant doesn't mean that it suddenly is everywhere. Chromosome 6 has epilepsy and diabetes determinants. Chromosome 7 has more diabetes determinants, plus cystic fibrosis, obesity, Williams and Pendred syndromes. Chromosomes, which contain this gene DNA, can affect so many different things, and just one gene can mess up everything or make everything kind of awesome. So you get the idea. We look at these genetic mutations and we can determine all sorts of things. There are companies that you can send a saliva swab to and they will tell you, based on stuff from the Human Genome Project and their own researches, what your DNA says about you, which is both good and bad. It can be negative to get all that genetic information without context, so there are some cautions there, but I would be super interested in trying it. I don't know about you guys. Uh, this is really cool because genes can tell us a lot because these mutations happened throughout our history. So if you look at genes, not only can you get an idea of who you are, but you can get an idea of where you came from and how your genetics have changed over time. So genes can tell you what you look like right now, but they can also tell you more because those mutations happen over time. So if we follow those mutations backward, we can get an idea of our own history just from looking at our genetics. So that's where we're gonna go tomorrow. Make sure you talk to your friends about your genetics. Go and see if they can roll their tongues. And let us know in the comments if you can do the soap dish thing, because I've been trying to do that forever, even though it's probably not in my genes. And also make sure you subscribe so you get all of our videos all week. Tomorrow we're gonna talk about the history of you through your genetics. Thanks for watching.